All right, this is Professor Coles. Um, we're going to be going through the open foam um, computation for viscous flow over a flat plate as part of your homework three computing assignment or part of your homework three assignment. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, the part of the assignment where you determine your own personal um, flow properties you need to set up to solve the Reynolds number you're looking at. So you would have been assigned um, uh, individually whether your flow is uh, turbulent or laminar and what the Reynolds number of the flow would be. Now um, as you would have read in your homework what we're going to be doing to hit the Reynolds number is we are not going to be changing the length of the plate or the free stream velocity rather the denominator which is the kinematic viscosity. Um, so U is going to be one meter per second, L is going to be one meter, those are going to be unchanged for everybody. What people will be changing individually is the kinematic viscosity. In my case, uh, my Reynolds number at the end of the plate was a million, um, so U, uh, U times L over nu, which is the Reynolds number, has to be a million. In order to get that, I need my nu uh, to be one e to the minus six, so this is meter squared uh, per second, that's the kinematic viscosity. Uh, of the problem and my assignment was laminar to solve for a laminar flow. So those things will affect um, the two modifications I'll need to make to the input deck to make uh, to make this work. So what we're going to do is I've already logged into the cluster here. Um, I'm in an X11 shell. Um, so if you're a Mac user and you have uh, Fuse up and running and you've mounted a file system just um, uh, point that file system at the cluster and open up a shell and log in and sort of follow along with what I'm doing. If you are on Windows, um, you will do the same. Once we get to the point where we're editing the files, I'll, I'll tell you what to do. So if you're on Windows, have a PuTTY shell open. If you're on a Mac, have a terminal open. Log into the machine as, as described in the homework with the secure shell command. Um, and if you are on a Mac and you're not using Fuse and you want to be able to edit the files remotely and you're not comfortable with a, with a terminal based editor like VI and you want to use something that has, a, has an interface to it, um, then what you have to do is install X11. You can see I'm running X11 here. Um, online, I, I, as I mentioned the, in the homework, it's called Quartz X11. It's a free DMG you can just install with a couple clicks. Um, open up the X11 window, which looks a lot like a terminal, um, and log into the cluster. Very much like a terminal. It just forwards uh, X11 stuff to, to this computer. It's X11 is the Windows, uh, Windows environment for Linux. So we're in there now. I'm going to type PWD. You can see I'm in this home directory here. You do the same in PuTTY or in X11 or in the terminal. Then I'm going to um, go into my directory. So student dears, I'm hitting tab the whole time, very typing barely anything. G Coles here. I see, uh, let's see, how many students have actually done the computing assignments? Maybe half, a little more than half. Now I'm in G Coles here. Let's see, home MN490A student dear G Coles. I'm here now, okay. Um, what I'm going to do, I have stuff in there from the previous assignments. I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it homework three. And make dear, that's make a directory in Linux, homework three. And I'm going to cd into homework three, and I'm here. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in the, in the input files that I'm going to use to run the flow solver. So I will say um, copy. I just want to check one thing here. Pardon my commands. Okay. So I'm going to say copy temp B layer foam 2D.tar to here. Tar is a tape archive. It's like a zip file, basically. Um, although this one's not compressed, but it's a way of putting a bunch of files into one thing. Um, and it has its history back to actually putting things on tape, but we don't do that anymore. Um, so that's a tape archive. It's a single file containing all the input stuff. I'm going to extract this tar file. The command I'll type here, this is written up your homework too, is tar xvf. X is for extract. V is for verbose to tell you what's going on. And F is the file. Um, oops. 
tar xvf b layer i'm going to hit tab here b layer foam dot tar um, and it will extract hit return okay you see this all the, all the files have been extracted here if i type list i have uh, the directory it's created and it, under that will be all uh, more subdirectories and files and stuff here's the tape archive just left alone i'm going to remove it at this point um, instead of typing rm remove b layer foam 2d dot tar um, I'm just going to say rm star.tar. Star Stars is a typical wildcard used for searches and stuff. Here, there's only one tar file in the directory, so rm star.tar star will remove that one tar file. List, it is gone. So now I change directory cd into b layer foam 2d, and this is the input files and files to run and files to plot and everything else for the uh, homework assignment, for the computing assignment. So the two things I need to change um, are in constant. Con inside constant are basically the flow properties for the solution. So I'm going to go into constant, cd constant, and there's some files, some stuff here. Um, RAS properties, um, which is are the turbulence stuff, and transport properties, which should only have maybe density and kinematic viscosity. Let's open that up and have a look at it. Gedit transport properties um, is going to open that up through my X11 windows. Now, if you are in, um, if you're using Fuse on the Mac or you're using WinSCP in Windows, at this point you would want to do is start up WinSCP um, and on the remote file system find your way to this directory here. Um, click down until you get to your student directory, mine's G. Coles, Homework 3, B Layer, Foam 2D, Constant. So you're in this directory uh, through WinSCP and then open that file. Um, transport properties with whatever editor you use on, on your Mac. I'm going to open it with a gedit transport properties. It should pop up. There it is. Okay. So now I'm looking at my desktop and it's connected to the remote file system there. Actually, there's only one thing written here. It's actually already correct. But it says um, new. This is a kinematic viscosity. This is OpenFoam's funny way of telling units. Um, this is a mass length, time, temperature, and I have no idea, I've never used these other three. Um, so you have length squared per time, so you're telling it uh, what the units are. Of course, length squared per time is are the units of kinematic viscosity, meters squared per second. Here's the value in the system we're using, which is MKS, so this is in meters squared per second, uh, 1e to the minus 6. It's already set to what it is. If it's not set to what you would need, uh, you would have to modify this. So I'll leave it as is. Then I'll hit save. So you would modify and hit save. It says down here, saving file. You, in, If you're in Windows, you save through your editor and it should update the file on the remote machine. I'm going to close this. You can close it on your Windows machine. Okay, and the other one I'm going to edit is uh, RAS properties. Same thing. Open this up. Just a couple of things here. Um, here's the turbulence model. It's a K-Omega model. Uh, you can Google that. It's a very common um, probably the most popular turbulence model and turbulence is off. It's already off. Um, if you're doing uh, turbulent flow you would want to switch this to on. If you are doing a laminar flow you want to switch this to off. Basically it kills the turbulence model and you're thus solving the Navier-Stokes equations minus the turbulence model. So that should be off or on depending upon if you're doing turbulence. I'm not so it is off. Save. Close. Um, so that's all done here. Uh, okay. All right, so now I'm going to go back up. Hopefully that is done correctly. Go up one directory, cd dot dot slash. A funny kind of symbol there, dot dot slash. Up one directory, pwd, home, mne, 490a, student dears, my personal directory, homework 3, b layer, foam 2d. That's where I am type list. Now I'm going to run the code. So we got to all sit here in silence for a second. Um, so I run with dot slash all run. But for first to, before I do that, I'm going to clean it. I'm going to make sure all the output directories are gone and the logs are gone and all this kind of stuff. I probably will say cleaned up or something. Here it goes. Cleaning. Done. Now I'm going to run it. All run. And what run is going to do is a three-step process. The first is to generate a mesh, and I'll show you what a mesh looks like when we get to the visualization part. 
The second is to run the actual flow solver. Um, so computing either um, the Navier-Stokes equations or the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, depending upon if you our turbulence is off or on, over this flat plate um, using the flow properties you described with an inflow velocity of one meter per second. The plate length, uh, the length of the plate where I have a no-slip condition is one meter. Um, and so that's essentially what it's solving that. It's using um, solving incompressible flow to, to a steady state solution. I'm going to hit return. should take maybe a minute. Okay, so block mesh went quite quickly. Now it's running simple foam. Um, so it's running the flow solver. Now normally we're going to submit jobs later in the semester for your, for your project. You're going to be submitting jobs through the queuing system. So they will actually run on the compute nodes. Here you're submitting this job on the head node, but because it's so small and quick, that's okay. It's no different than, say, compiling a code. It's already done. So ran block mesh. This is the mesh generator. I ran simple foam. This is this particular um, incompressible flow solver, steady state flow solver of open foam. Um, and then it ran a program called foam to VTK. Basically, it converted the output files from a foam, open foam specific format to a very portable format called VTK. Um, that we're going to use to to visualize. So that's done. I'm going to type list. It's a few new files appear. These are log files from the run. You can have a look at those just to see. It just spits out information while it's running. Um, these three different codes. Now the first thing I'm going to do is check uh, what the final drag coefficient is. Um, so I'm going to check the final drag. Check final CD. Uh, check final CD. So dot slash check final CD. That's an executable already. Um, I'm going to hit that. Basically, so I'll just if you want to open it, it doesn't do anything exciting. But um, inside, one of the things that is output are forces, non-dimensional forces, including drag coefficients, and those get dumped into this directory here. Post processing. I can go in and look at them if I want. So I CD the post processing. What is it? force coefficients, those are the non-dimensional coefficients, and zero. So I'm now in the subdirectory of my B-layer foam 2D post-processing force coefficients zero. Uh, there's one file in there, force coefs.dat. I'm going to open this up like this. Okay. And now you see this, it's basically printing, it's running, in each iteration it's running. Here's the first iteration, there was a CD from that. You can see it's still changing. There's no lift coefficient, which is good, uh, and there's no moment calculated here. So the only thing we're calculating is CD, and this should be non-dimensionalized correctly using the correct plate area. It's a one by one meter plate using the correct uh, density, etc. So um, I'm going to just scroll down here. Where are we going? Where are we going? And you'll see that, actually, so it actually converges disturbingly fast, I think because this is such a low Reynolds number problem. So we have um, 0 0.0078 is my CD, and you can see it's changing. I'll scroll down, and eventually at the end, it's sort of not changing, which is a good thing. So it's converged solution. What I'm going to do, you don't have to look at that. I'm just showing it to you. I'm going back up to where uh, my main run area is, up one, up one, up one. So I'm up here now, list. OK, so what I'm going to run is a script, check final CD. It just grabs the last value from that using grep. Um, uh, grep. It just grabs the last file uh, value using grep. Uh, so I'm going to copy that. I'll just type it over here. So the last was 0 0.00720286. So that's my CD. You want to make a record of that. That's your, oops, that's your drag coefficient. Um, and that's part of the homework assignment that you'll turn in. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create uh, a plot of the drag coefficient as a function of iteration to make sure that it converges properly. I'm going to run the program plot, cd.plot. Uh, it's going to give an error about font stuff, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it is, but any, it's not a big deal. So if I type ls, I'm going to type, I tend to use this bunch of extra arguments on ls, but this will print them in order so that the last thing on the screen will be the most recent file, which will be the one I just created, which is this plot right here, drag history 
PNG. So that's a portable network graphics file, um, which should contain that history of drag as a function of iteration. So I can at least check it to make sure that when the computation stopped, it had reached a kind of a steady state value, this value that I've recorded over here. Um, so that's about it. And now what I'm going to do is transfer um, I'm going to transfer these files back um, is the next thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to transfer them back. I'll put them in the notes again. I'm not, I'd rather not type IP addresses into YouTube videos. So uh, I'll transfer them back here and you'll see how to do that in your homework. It's pretty simple um, to get the files back. It's very simple if you're using WinSCP. You're just going to drag the files, um, the two files, the VTK file, which I'll show you. You're going to be dragging this drag history.png over to your local system, and you're going to be dragging, and then you're going to CD into VTK. I'll go in there to show you. Um, you will go to VTK, uh, which stores the output files, and you're going to be dragging whatever this file is. Now, this file name is not fixed um, because the solver stops when it sort of detects that things have converged, and that may depend on people's Reynolds numbers. So. The number here, 692, iteration 692, will probably be different for everybody. Um, so you want to drag whatever is this large number. The other one's zero, which is the initial condition, which is not very exciting to look at. This one is the final condition. Um, so you will be um, pulling that over to your uh, local desktop. It may take a little while. It's a few megabytes. Actually, how big is it? So it's uh, 1.2 megabytes. So it should be pretty fast. You'll be pulling that over to your local system. So I'm going to do that now and then I'll follow up in another video um, so that I don't have to, to put the IP address on the screen.